Hey guys, so in the last video, we did the very basics of CMake. We saved an executable out there and we ran it. If you look at our hello world code or hello CMake, it was very straightforward. We're just outputting hello CMake out to the terminal. Our focus was on getting this bare minimum set up here where we're able to create a program called hello and uh, it just takes main CPP and it builds it for us. What if you want to actually save your content in a different directory though other than the build directory? So let's look at that right now. One of the things I like to do is determine whether or not I'm on a 32 or 64 bit operating system. And the reason for that, the path I'm aiming for is going to be something like binary uh, after that let's say the um, the name of the system we're on so Linux Windows Apple something like that and then after that I want to include whether it's 32 bit 64 bit so on and so forth and then after that, I also want to include what type of build is it? Is it a debug build? Is it a release build? That way, as I do different builds, I can keep track of them rather than it just constantly getting overwritten on me. So let's start out with determining what our OS is. So we're going to set our OS bitness and we'll hard set it to 32 just so that we have something. After that, what we'll do is we'll look at C make size of void pointer. And if it equals eight, so that means it's eight bytes long rather than the default four for 32 bit, we will know that our OS bitness actually is 64 bit. And we'll do an end if on this. All right, so that's done. Next, let's actually start saving where our directories will go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a full output directory. And this is going to, what we're gonna use this multiple times. So rather than copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, why not create a variable and just use it? So we're going to start out with our CMake source directory. This is um, where our source code is currently located. It's the root directory of our project. We're going to have bin. After that, we're going to include the CMake system name. So this will be either Windows, Linux, whatever operating system you're using. After that, we're going to include our OS's bitness as we set it up here. And after that, we're going to specify our build type which is what is specified down here with debug or release. Perfect, all right. Now we just have to set a couple more variables, ones that are actually used by CMake. So we have our CMake archive output directory. And what is this? Well, this is the location of your static libraries. So if you're on Windows, your .lib files. If you're on Linux, your .a files. If you're on Mac, whatever they are. I'm not an Apple user, so I actually don't know. But I'm sure if I had to use a Mac, I would figure it out. Um, anyway, I'm just going to put to use this whole directory and then add a static library folder after that. Next, we will set our CMake library Oh, that one doesn't have an autocomplete. Well, let's make it then. 
That's always handy when the tool you're using doesn't know about it. Oh, it does. It's just that I wasn't being specific enough. We're just going to use the full output directory here so that the programs run the way we'd want them to. After that, we will do a CMake runtime output directory. And this is where your actual executable files go. And again, we're going to do the same output directory. And that's it. That's everything that we need. So let's just run this one or build it. We don't need to necessarily run it, but uh, we want GCC. It's going to build it. You notice now there's a binary folder. And hmm, yeah, we don't have to say that. It appears that I forgot a dollar sign. Save that again. Delete. Move that to trash. Build it. There we go. Now in binary Linux 64 under debug, there's a hello program. Let's switch from debug to release just to show what works. Now if we go in here, there is debug and release. Now, is there a way to open this folder directly here? Oh, how fancy is that? Now, if we click on this, you can see that this is 17.2 kilobytes in size. And if we go to the debug version, it's 39.3 kilobytes in size. So obviously all the debug symbols have been stripped out of the release version. But now if we look at this, we have our binary folder and Linux 64, debug, also release. And if we were to do a cross compile or if this project is shared across multiple developers and some builds were created for Windows as well, there would appear a Windows 64 folder. So this allows you to keep track of all of your binaries, all of your libraries, everything that you would need all in one spot. And that's why this is the second video in this series. Why not make our lives easier going down the road? All right, I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we will talk more about CMake.